Another important concept in basic chemistry for biology is water because we, all living things are, are largely water. They have a lot of water and they require water. And so we need to know how water works and how it forms solutions and why water is so important to living things. Once again, lots of terms, okay? Here's the vocabulary list you're responsible for in this particular part. So there are several reasons why water is important to life. There, it has various life supporting properties. It's important to all living things for a number of reasons. The four main reasons are listed here. The moderation of temperature, the lower density of ice, it's the solvent of life, and sensitivity to acid and base conditions. So first of all, moderation of temperature. Water resists changes in temperatures. The reason it does this is because it has hydrogen bonds between the water molecules. A hydrogen bond is a weak attraction that exists between the slightly negatively charged part of one atom and the slightly positively charged part, uh, I mean of one molecule, and the slightly positively charged part of another molecule. Usually the positively charged part is hydrogen. There, uh, there is um, heat that is used to form or relate the, to uh, I'm sorry that is released when hydrogen bonds form and in order to break those hydrogen bonds the heat has to be absorbed. There are lots and lots and lots of hydrogen bonds in water. Each water molecule has the ability to form three hydrogen bonds and so it, it's bonded on all sides usually and that increases the amount of heat required to break them. So it takes a lot of energy to break to change the temperature of water. You've seen this when you go to the beach um, because it, it's always cooler over the water or the water is always cooler than the land because it, the land heats up a lot faster than the water does because of those hydrogen bonds in water. Secondly, ice is, is less dense as a solid than as a liquid, or water is less dense as a solid than a liquid. This is also because of the hydrogen bond. When water molecules freeze, it forms stable hydrogen bonds between neighboring molecules. And since the stable bonds put it in this um, hexagon-shaped structure, it's going to make the molecules more uh, densely packed because in water, in liquid water, they can kind of move around and break and reform hydrogen bonds real easily. But in ice, they're going to be in a more stable crystal structure. Since they're less densely packed, then ice is going to float because the, the solid ice is less dense than, than the liquid water is. And this is important to living things because it forms an insulating layer uh, protecting the liquid water. And that allows life forms like fish and other things that live in the water to survive cold temperatures because the liquid water is never going to drop below zero degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit. That makes it much easier to survive. A third reason is that, that water is such a versatile solvent. It's often called the universal solvent and it is a versatile solvent because of its polarity. A solvent, remember, is a substance that dissolves something else. Polarity means that there are slightly different charges in one part of the molecule than on another. Aqueous solutions are very common in living things. That means water is the solvent. So when you see AQ or aqueous, that means it's a, it's a solution made with some substance plus water. Polar solutes dissolve easily in water. A solute is the thing that dissolves in the solvent. And so things like salt, which is polar, dissolves very easily in water. Ionic solutes, or charged solutes like salt also, dissolve and dissociate due to attractions in the polar water molecules. What that means is if it forms an ionic bond, then it will separate easily um, into its positive and negative ions, and they will be attracted to the differently charged parts of the water molecule. This is important for a lot of different reasons too. And in aqueous solutions, some of the water molecules even break apart into ions. Some of them are hydrogen ions, that's H plus. Others are hydroxide ions, that's OH minus. So the hydrogen, one hydrogen atom breaks off and leaves its um, electron with the other hydrogen and the oxygen, forming the hydroxide ion. Compounds that release hydrogen ions to a solution are called acids, or they are acidic. The ones that release hydroxide ions to a solution are bases, or basic. And we talk about 
their pH on a pH scale, which describes how acidic or basic a solution is. Here we have two different solutions, or three different solutions. We have a neutral solution, which has equal numbers of hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. Here's an acidic one that has more hydro hydrogen ions than hydroxide ions, so it's going to have a stronger uh, concentration of hydrogen ions, which gives it a lower pH. And here's a basic solution that has more hydroxide ions than hydrogen ions, and so that's going to give it um, a higher pH. The pH scale ranges from 1 to 14. 7 is neutral. That's pure water, distilled water, not just water out of the tap, but distilled water. It's going to have equal numbers of hydrogen and hydroxide ions. The pH values under 7 are acidic. They have more hydrogen ions than hydroxide ions. The ones over 7 are basic, and they have more hydroxide ions than hydrogen ions. An important thing to realize about the numbers on the pH scale is that each number represents 10 times as many hydrogen ions as the next higher number. So for instance, if you have a pH of 5 and you change the pH from 5 to 4, the pH of 4 has 10 times as many hydrogen ions as the 5 did. So every number represents 10 times as many as you move from the higher number to the lower number. In living systems, this can be very harmful, either acidic or basic. They need to be relative. They need to maintain a relatively stable pH to maintain homeostasis within the cell. There are solutions called buffers, which minimize changes in pH. When there's excess acid, they accept hydrogen ions. When there's excess base, they donate hydrogen ions, and that keeps the numbers relatively equal, which means that it prevents sharp, sudden changes in pH and allows only very slight ones, which are much less harmful to the organism. This concludes the notes on, on the pH and water.